Before I go ahead and install this power supply in the enclosure, there is a slight modification that I would like to make. So this power supply is, uh, as you can see, passively cooled. There is no fan pre-installed. Such a power supply requires the ability to, well, have some air movement uh, naturally, naturally occurring uh, due to its warm surfaces. Um, and I'll explain in a moment. So uh, had to remove a screw over here, one screw in the back, and we can simply remove the top part. So uh, in the power supply over here, you can see there are three components that are attached to the outer housing. These two components in the back, they are two MOSFETs that switch the rectified primary side voltage through our um, transformer over here. And the secondary side voltage needs then to be rectified by this diode package over here. And all of these three components are thermally connected to this part of the outer housing. And if we take a look over here, so this complete side is just bended and we have a bend over here. So this means this piece in the back, this on the side and this on the bottom, this is one piece. And that is also the whole surface area that will uh, dissipate heat energy uh, produced by these two components. And my modification is simply going to be uh, some thermal pairs that I want to have between the component, this insulative pad and the between the pad and the housing. And over here between the component, the pad, pad, this uh, aluminium piece in between and this aluminium piece and the housing. Now, as you can see, we do have some thermal paste uh, over here, but I'm not sure if the other components have sufficient thermal paste or thermal paste at all. You have to also, uh, well, get thermal paste in between every surface, not only between the component and this pad. Now, these pads, it's not like they are not designed to conduct heat, but they are more um, designed to electrically isolate, safely isolate these two components because this is secondary side voltage, this is rectified primary voltage and electrically connected to the same um, heatsink. So they are very important but I want to make the thermal transfer between the components and the housing more efficient with additional and better thermal paste which will then hopefully prolong the lifespan of this power supply. And this is also something that is not um, in any way changing the electricals. I'm not touching the electricals. I'm not interested to do anything in this regard. The only thing that I will do is use this potentiometer over here. But you are allowed, allowed by the manufacturer to touch this. Uh, the cover sits in here like this and you can get access to this uh, potentiometer even if the cover is on. And this is to be used to readjust the secondary side, the 5 volt voltage, uh, depending on load. So if you, for example, were to pull 30 amp, you would have a significant voltage drop. And to account for that, we can use the small potentiometer over here to get the voltage back up. Yes, yeah, so I will get the power supply out and uh, I think I'll do this on screen. I mean, as I say, really quick thing to do. Just have to loosen some screws and know that I take a look. So we have one screw on the back over here uh, underneath this um, the sticker. We can remove this holding arm, this piece that presses the component against the spacer. The spacer itself has, an own, has its own screw. We don't have to attach it right now. This one goes away. Then the one screw for the back two components and its holding mechanism. And then, as it seems, we only have one additional screw on the bottom left. And then we should be able to get it out. I think it 
is missing some screws. Yeah, we can get it out. So, as you can see, there is no thermal paste. And there's also no thermal paste. Now remove it. We have some thermal paste over here. Uh, and less over here. Didn't make too good contact. And we have plenty of thermal paste on this part. So, I need to clean off the old thermal paste. Get new thermal paste in. This on top. Thermal paste on the back, and uh, thermal paste between the housing and the spacer, and then we're good to go. Okay, so I cleaned every surface, all of these uh, insulative pads, this aluminium spacer, and even the inside of the enclosure. What I'm now going to do is use some uh, thermal paste. Now this is a decent quality thermal paste. I forgot how this one goes in. Oh no. Yes, the holes do line up. So, uh, this is a decent quality thermal paste. It's the GD900. Thermal paste goes on top of here. We don't need too much thermal paste, but a, a decent um, layer of thermal paste all over this spacer. Again, we don't need too much, but everything should be covered in thermal paste. And I'm using the spreader, applying quite a bit of pressure on the thermal paste to spread it more evenly and very, very thin. That's okay. We don't have to do a pretty job just uh, covering everything. I have to line up all of the holes, hold it in place, then get the screws in over. And I feel, yeah, I think we can use a bit more thermal paste as it seems, the surfaces don't quite make good contact. Um, might be because of some, um, I don't know, surfaces might not be very straight to one another, so just a bit more thermal paste. Uh, less is more, but if you touch it and you don't feel like you have good contact, it's, it's hard to describe, but if you use thermal paste and have it used between surfaces, you know that you have a certain feeling of the paste sticking if you have decent coverage. And not so much this feeling if you don't. But now I do feel like we have a decent coverage and it is sticking to the outer housing. Why am I using my screwdriver? Ah, it was completely unnecessary because I have a new tool. This thing over here. The component. Then we'll paste on top. Then spread the thermal paste. Just like that, the whole backside is probably covered. Now we can get this uh, piece in place and it will properly adhere to the thermal paste. Well, not really, but it, it, it's sticky, so that's fine. Now we'll get some additional thermal paste on top. And this part is a bit tricky because you have to be careful that you're not sliding the rubber stuff uh, all around. So what I'll simply do is get a slightly thicker layer in so that I'm not as... I'm, well, I'm essentially not scraping as much. The thermal paste will also uh, be squished out when mounted. Also, you have to keep in mind, when the components heat up over time, the thermal paste will be bit more liquid and uh, because of the pressure applied by the by these holding arms will also squeeze out slightly 
more. And that's fine. Simply going to also cover these two components. This kind of a modification is really not necessary. This is just something that I do to these type of power supplies for, well, two reasons. Reason number one is I want them to, well, work for as long as possible. So I want to prolong their lifespan. Number two, uh, you saw they did use thermal paste, but only between one of the uh, two neighboring layers. So um, often you see uh, manufacturers use thermal paste between the components and these uh, rubber-ish pads or silicon pads, but not between the silicon pads and the actual heat sink. That's just not, um, well, it's better than doing nothing, but you should have thermal paste between each neighboring um, layer. Now you don't have to do a pretty job, but uh, it should be evenly spread. So I'm going to apply a bit more thermal paste, try to make a nice even layer like this, and then the rest goes on here. Um, everything that you apply too much will, again, it will be squeezed out. Now I can slide the power supply back in place. We have these uh, tabs over here and the PCB has to slide into them. Then we are in the right position. Now I can use this one screw. Oh, come on. Okay, this thing, I need the other bit that allows me to um, go in more straight, but yeah, I'm going to use my normal screwdriver. Uh, thumb paste is no longer needed. I again made a mess on my table. Some isopropanol solves this issue. And now, we simply have to get all of these um, holding arms back in place. So the one on the back is this one. And we can... Oops. Let's see, there are two holes. Which one is better? That's difficult. I think the lower one is a bit better. Or the upper one. I think that should be fine. Oh, by the way, if you do this kind of modification, as you as you can see, I, I touch the power supply um, again and again. That is because this power supply uh, actually never got powered on since I got it. I'm completely confident that it works. And I'm doing this modification before I ever tested it. I mean, you shouldn't do that. You should test it first. But if you did that, if you test the power supply before you do this modification, if you want to do this, well, you have to be careful because the capacitors are loaded with, well, rectified mains voltage. Um, mains voltage. Wait. They are not as dangerous as they are. So rectified mains voltage, relatively high voltage, 240 volt AC in Europe, rectified is 300, 315 or something like that. That's quite a bit of voltage. So uh, be careful. And also I need to slightly, uh, no, that's, a, that's fine. The screw still can't fit in here. Yeah, that feels okay. That 
it's okay. And that is the modification that I like to do to power supplies like these. Um, that just helps with thermal transfer and makes the whole thing last much longer. And yeah, so that's it. Uh, nothing else needs to be done. And we can close this back up. And then start the actual assembly process.